<laughs> Alright guys, and welcome back. So the glove is coming off. You know what time it is. I'm done trading because today I was on the wrong side of the market. Uh, and what I want to talk about today is how not to get stuck in the flush. And obviously the easiest way not to get stuck in the flush is to not trade because if you're going to trade, eventually you're going to get stuck into, you know, flushes here and there. It is it's it's how it goes, right? That's the essence of trading. Volatility is our friend, and if we want upside, we're, it's gonna come with the downsides. However, today, what I did wrong was simply, I was patient, but then I wasn't aggressive at the right time. So being a trader, you wanna be patient, you wanna be like a retired trader, someone that doesn't really care what's going on, but once you start seeing the move, bam, you wanna get aggressive on it. And today, I missed almost all the front side moves. We didn't have like great front side moves, but we had some decent moves where I could have made, you know, decent five to 10% based on my average position size and walked away. Unfortunately, I came in late and then tried to trade tickers that were already kind of, you know, expired on their front side move. Not in terms of coming in late as of waking up late, but more like watching the move, being like, nah, I don't really wanna trade that. And then when the risk reward isn't really there, kind of FOMOing into it later. So the best way not to get stuck in the flush is trade the move, get aggressive, and as the ticker starts either going exponential or seeing big resistance and kind of fizzling out there, maybe be careful a little bit um, because that's oftentimes where you see flushes. And that's what I did wrong today. So today's recap video I kind of want to focus on a little bit more on you know the individual tickers obviously you guys can read this I'll just you know pause it right here if you want to read what's going on or that first pin comment I always post the watch list link or if you just go to tradejournal.co forward slash Winkler you could then get access to this portfolio totally free and you could just check out my posts my trades and all that fun stuff as well so um, let's let's go through the tickers I trade today and you'll see right away what I did wrong. And let's start with the big whacker CWBR. This ticker really, um, whew, it got me pretty good. Um, okay, so this ticker, uh, okay, this this was the nice front side move. I was actually quite excited when I saw this move because I was like, uh, okay, we might see some good action today. It was from 5 to 5.30. Obviously, TOS doesn't start till 7 a.m. pre-market, so I didn't trade any of this, yada, yada. Um, and then there was, uh, you know, we were starting to kind of break above this resistance zone. So we were kind of trending on a little bit of a front side. I didn't really have much luck here. I made a little bit of money, but it wasn't, you know, it was kind of not ideal trading conditions. Um, kind of scrolling forward a little bit. And let me zoom in now to the market open because this is when it gets interesting. First, we have a big pop here to the front side. Uh, and actually, let me zoom in here to kind of... I feel like the five minute chart is always really nice to get a good overview. And then this is usually the daily. I don't know why I had it four hour today. Maybe that's a little bit of foreshadowing, you know, not being focused. Um, so we had, um, you know, we found big support at 1.96, which is multi day support. And we bounced off of that. I bought into the first pullback there, made made a little bit of money there, three cents a share, wasn't really anything run home about, was also small size. You can see 810 shares. I didn't get uh, my, my entry, right? I think I had like 6,000 shares ready to go. It barely touched my limit order and then kept going on. And I was like, ah, missed my fill. Uh, oh, well, it is what happens. Then we have a nice breakout. This is definitely a confirmed breakout. Um, new highs here. So let's see if we can get a pullback. You know what? There was a pullback. Guess who missed it? I missed it. I didn't get aggressive enough. I don't know what it was. Um, then we have another move to the upside here and another move. And I'm like, at this point, I'm like, I should be on this because this is literally my trading strategy. Um... And then uh, we have a pullback. Guess who doesn't trade the pullback? I don't trade the pullback. I have no idea why. I'm waiting for a way bigger sell-off that didn't happen. And guess what? Uh, actually, well, there was a little bit more of a dip and then we had another big breakout. And I bought, finally, I bought into this breakout at 218. Problem was, this actually ended up being the one that flushed. Yeah, I bought a 218, 6,000 shares. And I pretty much got out right away. Um, at 204, which luckily wasn't the perfect low, but still. And you know, this was what, like a six, 7% flush uh, with like a little bit more than half size. So right away, I actually lost like eight, $900 on this one. Cause I was up, I don't know, one to $200 on CWR. I don't remember, but yeah, boom, just like that, took a big loss. And it was really because I didn't get it really super aggressive here. I didn't get aggressive here. You know, I should have bought this pullback at like 212, 213. There's a good chance I would have tried to take profits. Maybe this could have been a green trade. This could have been a great green trade, 6%, who knows? It did happen really fast, so there's also a good chance that 
um, maybe I, I still would have took a loss. Either way, the loss would have not been that bad because I would have already you know made money. Not to mention, I would have took this trade, maybe this trade as well. Um, so it's yeah. You know, if you wait too long, eventually you start fomoing into worse setups, and that's something I say on this channel a lot. If you miss your move you're gonna probably feel a little bit of FOMO and wanna take a, a move later on to make up for it, even if it's not that good. That's why I always say, trade the move, even if, if, and if you don't feel super confident, trade with half size, trade with smaller size, just don't miss it, because if you miss it, you're gonna get FOMO just like I did. And now there's there's better tickers today to uh, describe that. Let's talk about the second ticker. I'm up slightly on this one. Oh, I already forgot, D-Y-A-I, D-Y all these tickers it's actually hilarious when like my non-trading friends ask me you know what what stocks i was trading today sometimes i'll remember the tickers but you know i definitely don't remember what the company was doing maybe like okay if it's like a really big headline i'll remember but it's like how do you trade companies that you don't even know like what they do but um if you're a trader you, you know exactly uh, how it's possible anyway uh or or what it means to do that right because you're trading price action we're not trading news it's it's you know you don't need to know the news necessarily there's certain news that i like more than other news we talked about in yesterday's video all right anyway dy uh ai this one big breakout here i bought in the pullback it was looking a little bit weak so i sold right away good thing because it ended up flushing this one i did it right Guess what? Big move. I bought into the breakout. That's what you're supposed to do. It was looking weak on the order book, so I sold. I could have maybe rebought here, but I didn't chase into a late entry near potential big support at $5 on this one. So it was good. I didn't chase near big resistance. That's, you know, boom, lesson right there. F U L C. Let's go to this one. Um, F U L C. Wang Kablang. Look at this. Okay. Oh, man, FOMO Sally over here. Huge breakout move. Where should I bought? I should have bought into this candle or maybe even this candle. Then maybe took profits as we were approaching resistance. That would have wrapped up my first 3% trade or so. Then I would have only needed, you know, two more trades like that to make, you know, between 5 and 10% of my average size. Boom. You know, that's how you make those one $2,000 days when you're trading uh, $10,000. Now, okay, FULC. Uh, another move to the upside, guess what I don't do? I didn't trade here, I don't know why. I didn't trade here, uh, I don't know why. I just snoozed right through it. Eventually, I do trade this one near the highs, uh, and then I get a little bit of like, oh God, I feel like I bought too high and I close it right away. Uh, just embarrassing, honestly, so embarrassing. I should have bought this pullback, that's what I don't do, I didn't buy the pullback. Should have bought this pullback, that's what I did not buy it. This move right here, 17%, I could have easily walked away with at least 5% of that. You know, we're not trying to get them, you know, not trying to get the whole move. We're not trying to get perfect entry, perfect exit. We're just trying to get a chunk of the move, a nice, nice bite-sized piece. Um, yeah, and then, you know, if I if I really had FOMO on FULC, I didn't really want to trade this ticker because I felt like it was extended in general because it was multi-day runner already from yesterday. Um, you know, who knows what I would have done on this one if I kept trading it. It was flushy as heck. And if you guys are on Twitter, like I know some of you guys are, I even posted this today where I was like, um, CWBR is August in a nutshell. Now this isn't CWBR, but you know, look at these flushes. And we just talked about CWBR. Um, let's actually go back to that one for a second. Um, because it's just, you know, look at this, just, you know, kind of an okay run up flush, run up flush, flag pattern flush. You know, it's just like, that's been August. It's just been so nasty. I'll show you guys my calendar in a second on August. And then AHPI, this is the one I, I walked away with a little bit of profits on. I actually did get stuck on another bad move on this one, which was kind of annoying. I was up, uh, I, I could have easily been a green day today, but I got stuck in a flush again on this one. So front side move, guess where I was? Not on the front side move. Totally, you know, snoozed. I did trade one pullback here, um, but I sold into the potential breakout too soon. Um, so again, I missed my front side move. Guess what I do later on? I, I get to FOMO and I try to trade uh, here and I get stuck in a flush. Not as nearly as a good setup. This is a ranging pullback. I literally just had a whole video about not trading ranging pullbacks. Because why did I do this? Because I had FOMO. Because I missed the great front side. I should have took this front side, boom, been done. If I missed that great front side earlier today with um, FULC, which we, were, we just talked about, that great pre-market run, 
you know, I should have wrapped up after that. And if I really wanted to keep trading, AHPI would have made another great front size. I should have traded that and been happy with it. Um, I did luckily um, get a good dip trade on this one near VWAP. I called that one out in the Discord. Congrats to anyone else that traded that one. And then we had a nice little pullback here. This one luckily wasn't super extended from VWAP. So this one was a little bit uh, better set up than this one because we're ranging, we're on the front side. I have a whole video about literally ranging and front side breakouts and pullbacks. So I'm not gonna talk about it much in this video, just you know, search my channel. Uh, but yeah, that, I mean, that's, that's pretty much the essence of today. You know, if I try to trade this breakout on a range, that, that would have been the worst move. You get stuck in a flush. So first of all, you know, you, you look for those good setups, right? But second of all, you know, trade, you know, be patient, wait for the front side. And once you see it, get aggressive, realize that it's on the front side and just don't sit around and, and miss it like I did today. I mean, it was just absolutely ridiculous how I traded today. I'm like, I'm generally ashamed of my trading today. Uh, I just wanna pull off an ostrich and stick my head in the sand. Um, where, what month? Okay, so this month is easily, is easily setting up to be, I think my worst month of the year. Now I haven't had a red month in like almost two years and I hope, knock on wood, this is not a red month. But right now, I've been red, and today's the 11th, $300 red day. Today, um, so overall, it's a it's a red month for me uh, right now, which is a little stressful, uh, for sure. So if we just click on the month, and then we go to the unlimited account, and then we go to till the end, uh, which is today, let's go and apply these uh, stats. So, yeah, this month I'm down 458 at the trades from today. I'm down like 758. Um, you know, I'm just constantly giving back profits. My win ratio is okay, but you know, I'm just, I'm taking too much risk by taking these not so good setups. Um, the market's definitely not hot right now. The market's horrible right now. So there's a lot of flushes. Um, but at the end of the day, it's also my fault for not, you know, adapting a little bit more. Now, it's, you don't want to like switch up your trading strategy just for a few weeks, but at the same time, I should be a little bit more conservative on trading, you know, later breakouts because near resistance, they, they don't have extra good resolution. There's a lot less chance that we're going to have that, you know, huge massive move and I should be getting aggressive sooner. It's that simple. But you know, it's it's always harder said than done, um, which is also literally it's that simple. It's harder said than done. No, it's harder done than said. It's easier said than done. Sorry guys, I had that whole mixed up. It's easier said than done. And um, yeah, that's the essence of this video. So if you guys don't wanna get stuck in a flush, trade harder earlier, be patient for the front side, and then get aggressive when you see that. And just be careful near big resistance zones. That's obvious. Obviously, you might miss a breakout if you don't trade, you know, near resistance as well, but um, just be careful, you know, when the front side's, you know, getting a little bit weak near the end. All right, guys, that's everything for the video. Don't forget to drop a like on the way out. It's the easiest way to support the channel. I really do appreciate that. And if you're totally new, I want to see you in the comment section. I want to see you in the Discord uh, and join the community. You will absolutely love it. Anyway, guys, that's all for now. I'll see you then first thing tomorrow. Like always, stay safe and make some awesome trades. Ciao, ciao.